Alright, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. It is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the ones watching in on the camera. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right? A lot of times we take our experience with the Most High God and we feel like, you know what I'm saying, that, that get us in there, right? All right? We talked about Gideon last week, right? Gideon, Most High God proved him, he proved a lot of stuff to him, right? First thing he popped up, Most High God just popped up to him and started speaking to him. That wasn't enough for Gideon. Gideon was like, okay, but I mean, our fathers told us about the miracles. Where are these miracles that, you know what I'm saying, that we get told about from Egypt? You know, because it's been some years removed. So they ain't, they ain't seen them themselves. They just hear about it. He was like, so where are these miracles at? All right, Most High God was like, you know what I'm saying? All right, let me show you something. So he brought out something, you know what I'm saying? What did he bring out? What was it, a goat? What? Did he bring out a goat? No. Um, didn't he, like, ask him to make the fleece? Well, that was later, but the first thing, he brought out, like, a sacrifice. He yeah, brought yeah, some yeah, type of he burned up, he burned up the And he burned it up for him. You know what I'm saying? He was like, okay, that's enough. Then later on, when it was time to go to war, he saw that they were real. He was like, okay, listen. If I put this fleece down, let do get only on the fleece, and not on the ground. And that thing happened. And he was like, uh, don't be angry, angry at me now. But just to make sure this thing for show, this time, let do get all over the ground, but not on the fleece. And that thing happened. Right? Then the last thing, he, you know what I'm saying, most of high God knew he was about to try to get nervous. So he is like, did we talk about the dogs? Did we talk about the people? Uh, no. We didn't talk about that? I don't think so. No. Oh, we're going to have to get into it. Right? But we see, we look at these things and we see that the Most High God will prove some stuff to some people, right? That don't change anything, though. No. You still got to obey that word, right? You still got to obey the word. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that's going to happen is you get that experience with the Most High God, you start speaking in tongues, right? You, you, you ask for a prayer. I mean, God, just, just look out for me and make sure I get this job, right? Or whatever the prayer may be, you know what I'm saying? Make sure I get this job. Make, make sure I get this baby, right? I want a new baby, right? Make sure I get, make sure I get, you know what I'm saying? Make sure, make sure, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the prayer might be, at the end of the day, let's say he just give it to you exactly how you asked for it. You knew it was God, too. You just looked at it like, God answered this prayer. God did exactly what I wanted him to do. At the end of the day, that thing's going to be used against you, right? How you going to answer, how you going to answer the man when you got to stand up before him in the day of judgment? He opened up them books on your butt. What do you think the books are? Uh, girl, uh, real quick, uh, give me Revelation 20. I don't got a Bible. Where's the book? Oh, thank you, brother. We appreciate it. I'm going to ask something else. <laughs> Where's the other book? Jay, you want to do me a favor? Would it be downstairs? Go look, look around on the couch. And then look around. Huh? Yeah, just try to look for a Bible. You know what I'm Brad, just bring that up. I appreciate it. Like fresh. I didn't want to eat mine all uh, crusty. <laughs> yeah, I just got it though. <laughs> this is Revelation chapter 20. Give me about verse, uh, what's the last verse? 20? Uh, 15. 15? Give me Revelation chapter 20. Give me about uh, verse uh, 9. It's Revelation chapter 20, verse 9. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. That's Revelation chapter 20? Yeah, you looking for verse 11. Okay, it's Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and on and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, 
and there was found no place for them. Mm -hmm. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So the dead, small and great? Small and great. Okay, and they stood before God, and then what got opened? And the books were opened. He said one book got opened? The book. The Bible got opened. The books. Okay, and what, and what else? And another book was opened, which is the book of life. So he got a whole bunch of books. Then he got this other book. You know, he noticed he, he it's already books. Then he mentioned this other one by itself. So the books was open, and after that, the book of life. Right? See, all these books just spread open. He's like, okay, let's talk about it. You don't think one of them books got your record? You don't think one of them books got 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 what you uh you know what I'm saying got what you didn't did all you want this one or right? You don't think one of them books got what you didn't done all your life? You don't think he gonna, he gonna open that thing up, play it on the big screen? That's how I like to imagine it. Play that thing on the big screen like, oh, you remember I did that for you. Oh, you was happy when I did that. Oh, look, you praised me when I did that for you. So you jump jumping around. Why didn't you obey? I just require one thing. Do what I say. Why didn't you obey? Where is that where it says, what does the Lord require? What is that, Micah? That is Malachi? Psalms, it's in a couple places, but... Give me Micah. Oh, man. To love mercy, respect, and walk humbly with your God. That one? Yeah, it's a shot in the dark. I don't know, it's, it's said in like three different places, but I don't know. How many chapters in Micah? Four? Yeah, I think so. Give me Micah four. I want to say it's Malachi six, though. Give me Malachi chapter six. Let's try that first. Is Malachi 6? Is Malachi 4? What did you say? Malachi 4. Malachi only has 4 chapters. Oh! <laughs> Malachi has 4. So give me, give me Micah 6 yeah. then. Is Micah 6? Alright, so I just had him backwards in my brain. I appreciate you. Yeah, that's an easy one. It is in 6, you saying? Yeah. Give me Micah chapter 6. Give me verse verse 8 is what I want or I want a little bit before that. Let me get uh, Micah chapter 6 verse uh, 4. It's Micah chapter 6 verse 4. Watch this. For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I set and I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Uh huh. O oh, my people, remember now what Balaam, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal. Uh huh. That ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the before the high God? Uh huh. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with the day in the day of? Well, oh, wait. Will the Lord be pleased with the thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Uh -huh. or, or shall I get my firstborn for my transgression, uh -huh. the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Uh -huh. He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee. He said he showed you what's good and what doth the Lord require of thee. But to do justly. He said all I'm looking for is you to do justly. And to love mercy. And love mercy. And to walk humbly with your God. And to walk humbly with your God. Most like God said, that's all I'm requiring of you. I mean, sure, you know, I'll bless you with all types of stuff. I'll give you all types of stuff. But at the end of the day, this is what I require. So anything that we attribute to God after that, guess what that becomes for us? A case against us. Right? All these things are set up. All right? It's important that we see it that way. Right? All of it is set up. If you don't obey God, the whole thing is set up to work against you. It's meant to be that way. Right? That's why it's important for us to come here, make sure we get an understanding, make sure we get what's going on, make sure it clicked for us, make sure we take it away from here, make sure we put it into practice. It's Hebrews. Give me Hebrews chapter 5. Got to go to Hebrews chapter 5. He told us He told us about the books being open. And one of the books was what? He said the books was open, and after that he said, and also what? 
book of life. The book of life. Let's read about it. It's Hebrews chapter 12. I mean, chapter 5. Give me verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. He became the what? The author of eternal salvation. Who do you think, Ro? Who do you think the author of the book of life is? Man, sit here and said, he became author of what? Author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So I'm just, I mean, let me just, let me just make sure, because somebody, some people be thinking I'm just making stuff up. Let me figure, how do I make it into having eternal life? Mm -hmm. Let me talk to the author. What the author say? And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. You gotta obey the man. How you gonna walk in here talking about, you know what? I keep the whole law. Front to back, I keep the whole law. That's nice. That's real nice. But did you did did, did you do it? Y'all she would command you to do. That's what it come down to. Cause y'all she would make that thing a little more tight. He'll tell you flat out, if you blaspheme, your butt going to hell. You defiled if you blaspheme. And when we think blaspheme, what do we think about? Daniel, what you think when I say blaspheme? What do we think about? Saying something like uh, that you're not, pretty much. Saying something that you're not, you're all right? Is that what you think too, blaspheme? Yeah. Saying something that you're not? Yeah. All right. That's what it is. All right? Blasphemy is just basically taking a person down somehow. Right? When we think of blaspheme, a lot of people just think of talking about God. Right? You blaspheming God. Well, you can blaspheme God. Right? But you can blaspheme your brother. When people cussing and all that stuff, it's blasphemy. Right? We blaspheming our brother. That's why we ain't supposed to cuss. Right? I call you out your name, do all that, it's blasphemy. Right? Now I'm just not blaspheming God. I'm blaspheming my, my brother or my sister or, you know, just a person. Right? But y'all, she made that thing tight. He said, don't blaspheme at all. Not just blaspheme God. Don't blaspheme at all. Now what you gonna do? Man told you don't get drunk. We ain't got no law against getting drunk, so now what you gonna do? <coughs> right? Our law, a lot of our fathers drunk wine and all that and got drunk doing it. Now what you gonna do? That thing get tight when y'all sure come into the picture. So what you gonna do? Are you doing what the man told you to do? If not, you ain't gonna see life. Right? Nah, nah, you know the best problem. What was our best promise in the law? Live good in the land. Live long in the land. You know what I'm saying? You can live long days in the land. Yeah. You know who got that for us? Y'all sure. Whole book was talking to him. See, all these promises, all these promises have been made about the law. None of that stuff hit us. We dodged every one of them darn promises. Every one of them things we prom we got we got in the land not so soon that darn Joshua died and the other elders. We start running around. No, I mean, we're just cutting deals with people. Like, I mean, God gave us the land, but since y'all was here first, y'all can keep that territory. When did y'all, why y'all cut? That's another reason. A lot of these people, let's talk about it. A lot of these people ain't gonna, a lot of our people, Hebrews, they ain't gonna wanna celebrate Thanksgiving. You know why? Because they killed all the natives. Because the these Americans killed the natives and took their land. Who land is this? This is the native land. It was a hat. Make America great again. You know, it was a play on it. Make America native again. You know what I'm saying? So that was a, you know what I'm saying, a little Native American thing. You know what I'm saying? But looking at that thing, I'm like, well, that thing don't offend me. Me personally, you know what I'm saying? It just don't. I mean, I get it. I understand. Who the natives killed? The, the natives just here. They ain't have to fight nobody for this land. It was just theirs already. What about when they kill other natives? Natives, they never took over territory. Yeah, they fought with each other all the time. So it's like, when did we draw the line? Because the white man did it, and now it's just like, oh, it's spooky. Mm, I can't, it's offensive. Any nation that's been established by anything, that's how it started. Yeah, I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, let's play that game with the whole world then. The whole world. They say, the, they say the Turkish people, you know where they come from? They say they came from the Huns. You know what I'm saying? Over there with the, with the, uh, with the Asians. They came over and they took over some land. Who in Israel right now? I mean, let's just play that thing fair. Let's take it back then. Right. Most of our God gave that thing to us. As far as I'm concerned, most of our God gave America to these people. And the book tells you, you give the nations to whom you want. 
Yeah. You're the king and the power of the nation, so we want to get it. I'm saying, kick against a man. I'm going to eat my Thanksgiving right. turkey. A Real series, nice. He said, a series of ride of my hand. Yeah. What, uh, what did Nebuchadnezzar say? He said, God set up kings. That's right. He tear down nations and build them up. <laughs> Wrong with me. I ain't, about to, I ain't about to kick against the man playing. What you talking about? Like America not ruling, like like God don't want America to rule or something. That ain't definitely in place because of God. Yeah. What I want, Romans 12? Give me Romans 12. Or Romans 10. No, I can't be Romans 10. It's probably Romans 12. Now that eventually we got to make our way back to Judges. We got to... Uh, I think what would be going? Judges 6? Judges 8? Judges 6. Judges 6. 40. Judges 6, 40. All right. It's Romans chapter 12. Give me verse 1. Watch this. I ain't about to kick against the man plan. I think no No, this is a made up holidays. You know what I'm saying? It's a celebration of America it's taking the native land. Well, darn right. They whooped them out for it. What you supposed to do? The Passover is. That's our claim to fame. Yeah. Taking people land. What you talking about? We took what well, we take the Philistines land. We took bull bites land. I mean, let's just break this thing all the way down. Let's just look at Israel's history, right? Canaanite land. Let, let's look at Israel's history, right? Took over Lebanon for a little bit. Where do our history start? Egypt. Egypt? Well, before that, you know what I'm saying? With Abraham. Abraham, you know what I'm saying? Start with Abraham. Okay. Abraham coming to the scene. He walked right into where? Canaan. He go to Canaan. He started buying land from who? Okay. He bought their land. It wasn't his land. He bought it from them. Right? So he started buying land from them. His sons and everything. You know what I'm saying? Go down. Then, one of our boys get taken into where? Egypt. Okay. So this is Joseph. He going to Egypt. Right? He going to Egypt. He tell them how to run their whole money system. You know how these people say, you know what I'm saying? Capitalism. You know what I'm saying? It's again, these people crazy. We against capitalism, capitalism. So let me tell y'all about some capitalism. You know what Joseph said? This is, a, this is a man of the Most High God. Had a vision from the Most High God. Most High God put him in place to have his wisdom put in place in Egypt. So he saw that it was going to be seven years of plenty and then seven additional years of famine. And Joseph, with his mind, with the vision that he got from the Most High God, he said, this is what we'll do. We gonna store the food in the seven years of plenty. That way, when the when it comes down to the seven years of famine, we'll still have food. And guess who gonna have to come to us when they get home? All the nations around us. All the people around us. So guess what Joseph did? Joseph kept the money back. I mean, kept the food back. The people came. They bought the food. He he stacked up his cheese. But guess what happens eventually? People run out of money. Because guess who got all the money? Joseph. Just like these rich white people. You know, about the one percenters and all that. And they just hoard all these loads of cash and keep it away from getting to other people. Look, I'm not kicking against these folks. Honestly, they looking at our game plan. They just say, oh, that works. I know how to do this. That works. What I'm saying here kick against these greedy folk for? We were greedy first. Right? The man said, look, y'all come to me and buy. They buy, buy, buy. I took all their money now, right? Joseph got their whole, all their stuff, right? So nobody has any more, mo any more money. They can't afford it now. So then they come to Joseph. They say, okay, look, this is what we'll do. I sell you my land. Just let me eat. Right? Okay, cool. Now I own your land. So now Egypt takes possession of all. The That's how Egypt became an empire. They ain't going to tell you this. They ain't going to teach you this in the school book. That's how Egypt became an empire. Because of a Hebrew. Because the wisdom of the Most High God in the Hebrew. Right? He put them on the map. Capitalism. He said, you know what? The only ones I'm not going to touch. Who are the only people he wasn't going to touch? The priests of, uh, of uh, Egypt. Yeah. Oh, they, they didn't get touched. Yeah, he was like, yeah, no, we ain't going to touch them. That's the only ones I ain't going to touch. Everybody else? Y'all but get it. Yeah, then after that. They started to serve. They started to be like, well, we'll be your servants, right? You got my land. Now we'll be your servants. So in, a, in that, I got your money. I got your land. And now, and now you're going to work your land for me. I get everything that's coming from your land. And I'm going to sell that to somebody else until they run out of money. And I'm going to take what they got, too. I own it all. All right? Egypt was big. 
That's how you put Egypt on the map. You just put a Hebrew there. Right? Thank you. Same thing with this. Ain't nothing different. Ain't nothing different. You just put a Hebrew there. All these inventions that they talk about, you don't think a Hebrew was there in the back of the picture like holding up stuff? You know what I'm saying? You catch a Hebrew, they, they posing, you know what I'm saying, with their Nobel Prize and all that. You see a Hebrew in the back like this? Do I have to get it butt whooped trying to get in the picture? There's always a Hebrew there. That wisdom come from a Hebrew? What's wrong? What's wrong with these people? People don't come over darn nothing. What's wrong with them? Book could tell you it was a foolish people. What is that, Deuteronomy 33? We might want to start. Give me, give me Deuteronomy. What is it, 33 or 32? You still want to do Romans? Yeah, give me Romans. Give me Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mm hmm. It be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect in the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, mm -hmm. but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. No, that's not what I'm looking for at all. Uh... That's all right. Give me, um, give me Judges. Let's jump back into Judges. This is Judges chapter, uh, we left off six, so give me Judges 7, verse 1. It's Judges chapter 7, verse 1. It's Judges chapter 7, verse 1. Then Jerubel, who was Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, Herod, so that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Mori in the valley. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Right? So remember, the Most High God, he called them out for war. Then after that, Gideon was like, okay, let the fleece have due on them. You know what I'm saying? So he had those two miracles done for him. After that, Gideon was like, let's do it. So Gideon gathered all the men together, and he ready to go to war with the Midianites, right? So once he about to go to war with the Midianites, Most High God was like, nah, you got too many people with you. Why would the Most High God think that? Why would he, why would he say it's too many people? Uh, need to get all the glory. Yeah. Don't y'all know that all the thing come down to the Most High God getting glory? What's going to happen when we walk in there? I mean, we just deep. I got way more people than the other side. I just walk in there and we just knock them over. We're going to be like, you know what? It's because I have so many people with me. Or somebody else going to say it. We're going to be like, man, God did that for us. They're going to look at us and be like, what do you mean God did that for you? Y'all had 20 people against three. Like, what do you mean? God, you know what I'm saying? God ain't do that. Y'all just have more people. Right? Wait up most high God where he is like, no, 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 no. We want to make sure that everybody know this is my business. So he said, no, nah, you got too many people with you. Watch how he figured this thing out. I love this thing. Watch this. And the Lord said again, and the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Uh -huh. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, mine own hand has saved me. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. All right? You see that, right? First thing he said, to weed some of them off, first thing he said, Whoever fearful and afraid, your choice. Go ahead and get up out of here. All right? The way, what y'all about to see this elimination of people, this is exactly out of word work. All right? It's exactly out of word work. All right? We put ourselves in position. It's like, you know what? I want to go into the word. The first thing the most high God going to do, or the first thing that a man of God is supposed to do, is show the people, this is what you up against. Make sure this is what you really want. Right? That's why, that's why I don't follow the order that we see today. The Christians and everything, they go out on the they street preaching. God loves you. Just that and other, da, da, da. That's cool. And it, like on the surface, that's cool. And it really looks admirable. And it looks like that's something that we should be doing. But then when you look at the book, it's totally different. The book is telling you straight up. Make sure you can handle this. 
Not everybody make it. Because what he's trying to do is, who's fearful and afraid? None of you start. Right? You fearful and afraid? No, you good. Go ahead, go back. You good. Turn your butt around. Because the most high God is looking for a chosen set of people. Right? He's looking for a choice group of people. He's not just looking for any old body. He's looking for somebody that's like, okay, look, you, you for real. Come on. Right? So the first thing, who fearful and afraid? Turn y'all butts around. Right? Then what you know? Some people are going to be like, eh, you know what I'm saying? Those are the same people that be like, you know what? I mean, I mean, no, I love God. I do. And I love God, but he's still working on me. Right? Those same people that be like, you know, everybody, you know, everybody come at their own time. Then they always try to throw your story in the mix. I mean, you, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I remember you from back in the day. You were wow, but it took God time to get to you. All right, whosoever fearful and afraid, go ahead and turn your butt around. That's all they're doing. They're turning their butt around because they're fearful and afraid. Right? They're not ready to take that on. Watch the next step. Watch this. And so he started off with like 30,000. And they returned other people 20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. So he started off with like 30,000, right? 32,000 it looked like. And then now, you only got 10,000 left. Okay, surely that's a good number. The most high God can work with that. Let's see. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. <laughs> most high God said, nah, that's still too many folks. Let's see what else we can do. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And whosoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. Right? So now he said, just bring them down to the water. And the ones I tell you shall go, those are the ones that are going to go. The ones I say you don't go, those are the ones not going. Right? Watch this. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that laps of the water with his tongue as a dog laps, him shall thou set by himself. Uh huh. Likewise, everyone that bows down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. So he said, let's separate the people in two groups. Bring the 10,000 people down to the water. Anybody who laps like a dog laps. In other words, they get under there and they get the water. And they just grabbing it with their hand and pushing it towards their mouth. Kind of like how a dog do it. They, play, they do it with their tongue. But he just, you know what I'm saying, just gritting it and pushing it to their mouth. He said, anybody who, who drink like that, you set them by themselves. But anybody who get on their knees. And they sit there and drink the water, you know what I'm saying? You get on their knees and bow down to the water and just kind of drink it out of the lake. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who drink it like that, you set them to themselves. Right? And he said, at the end of it, it was three, only 300 people that got down and laughed like this. Right? When we look at that, spoiler alert, he chooses 300 people, right? So that's, that's the ones that end up going to war, not the other ones. Right? So if we look at it, that seems insignificant. It's like, who cares how you drink? You know what I'm saying? Like, what does, you know what I'm saying? What does God care about how you drink? But that's the second group of people that we're talking about. The first group of people, who fear for and afraid? Turn your butt around. You know what I'm saying? Just get your butt. You ain't even ready to do it. Then the second group of people are not worried about doing things the way. They look at, a lot of times we ask the question, why is that a sin? I mean, if, if I'm just getting drunk in my own house, I'm not bothering nobody. I don't beat up on nobody. I'm just in my own house getting drunk. Why is that a sin? If, I, if I'm by myself, nobody is around, and I stub my toe and say a cuss word, why is that a sin? I didn't affect nobody. Nobody gets hurt other than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, why is that a sin? We ask these questions. Guess what question they might ask? Why did the 300 get in just because they lap like a dog? That don't make sense. Right? The Most High God is saying, I'm looking for a particular group of people. Right? The people who happen to do it this way, those are the ones that get in. The ones that happen to do it the way the words say do it, those are the ones that get in. Everybody else is questioning and trying to figure it out, trying to say, no, you know what, that doesn't make sense. Okay, your wise butt going to hell. Everything makes sense to you, and you're going to be making sense right in hell. Right? some point, we got to look at it. Keep going. Watch this. And the Lord said unto Gideon, 
By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thy hand, and let all the other people go, every man until his place. Mm -hmm. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent the rest of Israel away. They sent the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent, and retained those three hundred men, and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. Uh -huh. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into your hand. Uh -huh. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Pura, thy servant, down to the host. See? Most High God already knew. So far, you look at every step of the way, Gideon got scared a little bit and was looking like, God, can you prove something to me real quick? Can you just show me like this is really about to happen? So then he he limited all his people to 300. So what you, God already knew. We know what Gideon about to do. He about to get scared. I'm about to prove something else to him. So God just proactively hit him. And he was like, listen, if you end up getting scared, go on down there. Let me show you something. Watch this. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward thy shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Mm -hmm. Then when he down with Pura, his servant, unto the outside of the arm of the armed men that were in the host, and the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley of the grasshoppers for multitude, in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. Mm -hmm. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow Look. and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it, and the tent lay alone. And his fellow you know, asked I hear some of these said, dreams? Yeah, you look at them dreams, I'll be like, I couldn't tell you what that thing means. Watch how this boy break that thing right on down, though. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else except the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. You mean to tell me a darn piece of bread tumbled down a hill? And you got the sword of Gideon out of that? That's why I don't be paying attention. Tasha was telling me about her friend dream. You know what I'm saying? She was telling me about her friend dream. And I was like, I'm not about to pretend like I know what this does. I mean, her dream seemed flat out. It just seemed like a slam dunk. Like, obviously, this is what it means. But... If I saw a piece of bread tumbling down, I'd be talking about, oh, well, yeah, obviously somebody about to eat. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where I would have went with the dream. So if this dream seemed obvious to me, I'm just going to feel like I ain't interpreting that thing right. I ain't no dream interpreter. But whatever God make you feel like you doing, do it. You know what I'm talking about? That's all I can tell you. You know what I'm saying? That thing make you feel like you need to obey God, that's a good idea. Right? At the end of that, would have come down for me. These dreams be wild. Watch this. Keep going. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else except the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, mm -hmm. the man of Israel. For into his hand has God delivered Midian and all the hosts. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered into your hand the host of Midian. All right, so now Gideon has something else. He's like, Okay, now I'm encouraged again. Let's get this thing done. Right? Watch what they do. And he divided the 300 men into three companies. And he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. Mm -hmm. When I blow a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp. Mm -hmm. And say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Mm -hmm. So Gideon and the hundred men and the hundred men that were with him came into the outside of the camp in the beginning of, of the middle watch. Mm -hmm. and they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. Mm -hmm. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their hands, and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Mm -hmm. And they said, Every man in his place round about the camp, and all the hosts ran and cried and fled, and the three hundred blew the trumpets. Mm -hmm. and the Lord said, every man sword against his fellow, even throughout all the hosts. Right? So then the Most High God scared them, and they ended up, they were already scared, right? Gideon found that out because he was listening to them in a dream, and they having dreams about this whole situation. So now they got scared about it, right? And so when they start blowing the horns and start chasing after them, all the people start fighting each other, right? So they sitting there, they turn, excuse me, it's dark, it's in the middle of the third watch or the second watch. Right? They start fighting each other and slicing each other up out of fear. Right? Let's see. Keep going. 
And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, uh -huh. even throughout all the hosts. And the hosts fled to Beth Shittah in Zirai, uh -huh. Zirai, and to the border of Abel Meholah, mm -hmm. unto Tabith. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali and out of Asher and out of the and out of all Manasseh and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying. Come down against the Midianites and take before them the waters unto Beth Barah in Jordan. Mm -hmm. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Beth Barah and Jordan. Mm -hmm. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Z, and they slew Oreb uh, upon the rock of Oreb, upon the rock Oreb, and Z they slew at the winepress of Z and pursued Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Z to Gideon on the other side of Jordan. All right. So they made a reckoning of these people. All right? They invited the Ephraimites out. You know what I'm saying? Ephraim came. He came and got him a little bit too. All right? Let's see. Keep going. What verse is this? Uh, we on chapter 8. That's chapter 8? All right. The Judges chapter 8. And the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why have you served us thus that are... That Jump on down for me. Not. Jump on down to verse... Uh, what's the last verse? 35? Give me verse uh, 35. Give me verse uh, uh, give me verse uh, 20. And he said unto Jether, his firstborn, up and slay them. But the youth draw not his sword, for he feared because he was yet a youth. Mm -hmm. Then Zeba and Zalmunna said, Rise thou and fall upon us. For as the man is, so is his strength. Mm -hmm. And Gideon arose and slew Zeba and Zalmunna and took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks. He took away the ornaments that was on their camels' necks. Watch this. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule over us. The men of Israel, they said unto Gideon, Remember, Gideon did a great thing, right? The men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule over us. Be our king. Right? Watch this. Both you and your son, and your son's son also. Mm -hmm. For thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. He said, both you and your son, and your son's son also. Right? Keep going. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that you would give me every man the earrings of his prey. Look, every man, so you remember, he took the ornaments from the people, he took the earrings, he took their jewelry. Then after that, he said, I will make this, I ain't gonna rule over you, God gonna rule over you. I will make this one request though. All the earrings that y'all picked up, go ahead and give them to me. Right? Watch this, watch what he do with They had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. Mm -hmm. And they answered, we will willingly give them and they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. Y'all want to know something funny? They tell y'all Islam. You know what I'm saying? You look at Islam. They say Islam started uh, like 500 AD. Like probably a little, little bit after 500 AD is what they tell you that it started. And so Islam, you know, the, the, the symbol for Islam is the crescent moon with the star. If you look at, if you look at what it say, ornaments here, if you look up that word, guess what it say? Crescent. Right? I mean, they translate it as ornaments, but really what they was wearing on their ears is crescents. All right? They was wearing jewelry of crescents. All right? Don't let these people lie to you. You know what I'm saying? Islam ain't nothing new. You know what I'm saying? That thing is something old. You know what I'm saying? That thing is just an old idolatrous religion. And what happened is, after the people start focusing on one God and all that, everybody tried to follow suit and just kind of remix it in their own type of way. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff is, all this stuff is just... Just recycled garbage. The only thing that's unique and original is our stuff. All right? And I don't care what these people say about it either. I approve it. All right? Go ahead and go with it. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold. Mm -hmm. Besides ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian. And beside the chains that were about the camel's necks. Mm -hmm. And Gideon made an ephah thereof and put it in his city, even in Orpha. What's an ephah? Ophrah. 
ephod. Ain't that the, what the priest supposed to wear? That was the, what the priest wear. It's like a robe. Right? So he made he made an ephod out of it. He made like a robe. So it's like a, a golden robe, a big golden robe. Right? And he said, listen, this is all I want. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of, you know, put this in to remember me by. Right? Completely innocent. Right? Ephod is not an animal. Right? We got, we got what we supposed to grab a... Four or five. Uh, what? No. Give me, give me Deuteronomy. Give me Deuteronomy four. I'm gonna try to go with four. I think that's what I'm looking for. I don't know what verse. You might have to help me out. Talking about, you know, what I'm saying, uh, have no god before me. You know, what I'm saying, don't make an image. You saw no similar to. It's 415. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 15. I appreciate you. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that... The this is what we were talking about earlier, Daniel. That the Lord spake unto you in horror about the midst of the fire. Uh -huh, watch this. You he said yourselves. you saw no what? No similitude. What that mean when they say similar to? Because you know what I'm saying? I sometimes we don't know what these words mean. Y'all don't know what these words mean. You got to look them up or ask a question or something. He say similar to. He talking about you didn't see an image. You didn't see anything. Nothing similar to me. Right? You didn't see anything. Yeah. Therefore, don't make an image. Don't try, to, don't try to draw nothing on the page. You didn't see anything. All right, let's see. Keep going. Because that don't make sense to people. Let's see. Lest you corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. Okay. The similitude of any figure. Okay, hold on. The similitude of any figure. What else, though? The likeness of male or female. Okay, oh, can't be a man or a woman. You know what I'm talking about? So you guess what that got? You got your little flying female angel. Oh, that got that. That thing done. Right? Right? You got your unisex Jesus. Sometimes you look at them Jesus pictures, you can't tell if that's a man or a woman. That's what they enjoy. I mean, the book, book was prophesying that thing. Lighting it up, male up here, because they knew. You know what I'm saying? You knew they were going to be some smart animal. Well, Jesus was actually unisex. There's some people that be teaching that. They do. There's some people that be teaching that. Jesus was actually unisex. You know if he didn't put that in the book, they would have been like, no, that's not talking about that, because Jesus was unisex. He was neither male. Okay. Right, okay. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you call it. Right, keep going. Watch this. I ain't gonna say Jesus was transgender. These people have lost their darn mind. And make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. Uh huh. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. Oh. Right? I mean, it's our Hebrew brother. They walk around with that big old line on their shirt. You know what I'm talking about? I had one of them things. What I had to do to it? What I'm gonna do? I mean, let's see. I mean, let's just see. I know I serve the most high God, and I know I'm not worshiping no lion on the shirt. I'm just wearing this shirt because it represents that got that. Right. As soon as it represents, got that, got that done. Get rid of it. Okay, well, that was a nice shirt. I mean, it's nice. I like that line. It's a real nice line. What else I'm going to do? I'm just here and pretend like it don't say don't do it. No, I'm good. All right, for sure. Yo, but be good right in there. Hope it makes sense to you when you go too. We always try to make something, we always rationalize, try to make some, try to play on that line. Why we gonna play on the line? We spent our whole life compromising this book. Celebrating Christmas and Easter and Halloween and all these different things. We compromise this darn book with every turn we got. Show up every darn Sunday in Sunday school. And what they teach us in Sunday school? How many commandments? Didn't they used to make us remember the Ten Commandments? And the fourth one the whole time was keep the Sabbath. Whole time they had us thinking, they didn't tell us necessarily, but whole time they had us thinking Sunday is the Sabbath. They never elaborate on them, or they just make it seem like every day is Sunday. Or they hit you with that. Every day is the Sabbath. Manson here told you, make the Sabbath holy. If every day is the Sabbath, how is that set apart? <laughs> let me just, let me just try to see. I have seven right here, right? One, two, three, four, five, seven. I tell my son, okay, take one of those seven and then put it somewhere else. Right? So then if that one is over there and these are over here, that one is set apart from these. 
But then, if I tell you, put them all over there, is anyone set, set apart? You let these people make a pool out of you if you want to. All I'm saying is, the book is very clear. That thing is very clear. <laughs> Keep the Sabbath. Make it holy. Holy means set apart. Yeah. How are you going to set apart every day? <laughs> no, no, man. All right, let's see. He said, the likeness of any beast. Any, any beast that is on earth. The okay. likeness of any winged fowl that flies in the air. Oh, goodness. I got that. Then here, what you, then here, you know what I'm saying? She said, listen, I had some socks, what they have on them? She said, I got some nice pair of socks, I'm sure, right? But they're thick ones. They're a little thick. You got them little thick, them thick socks, you can't just, you know what I mean? You can't, you know what I'm saying? You don't run across the thick socks. You know them thick socks like really keep, you know what I'm saying? They hug onto your foot. Comfortable socks. Got a couple dogs on the side. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? The most I, okay. The book told us when your heart condemn you. You know what I'm talking about? That's one thing. But God is bigger than it and knows all things. What I'm sitting here and do it? Pretend like my heart didn't condemn me? Like God just gonna miss it? God probably busy. He probably didn't catch that one. Please, you have lost your darn mind. Stocks better go. That thing don't go to no darn salvation army. That thing don't go. You know where that thing going? What's, the, what's that thing right up the street? What's it called? What's it called? What they call it? The Republic Service. That's where that thing going. I don't even. Don't put that thing in the recycling bin. Either. You know how they got the blue trash can and then the regular one? Don't put it in there. Somebody mess around and be like, oh no, these are good. What I'm going to be a stumbling block to somebody else for? No, that thing need to go in the trash. Same thing with the poopy diaper. You know what I'm saying? Everything else, some of the stuff. Ain't nobody going to. Let it sit in the ground, rot, and decompose. Now it could be something. It, it could be something good after it decomposed. Right? It can be something good after it decomposed. Don't have no dove on your Bible. Don't have no dove. That stuff is crazy. For what? Let me have no angels, no floating angels, and all that stuff. All that stuff is idolatry. Right? Keep going. The likeness of anything that creeps on the ground. Mm -hmm. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. That got that. And what they gonna do? Throw a fish right on the back of their Bible. Throw a fish right on the bumper of their car. Right? What does that mean? Where'd that come from? Well, you know, Jesus, he fed. We just read that, right? Jesus fed 7,000 people. Was it 7,000? 4,000. 4, 4, he, he fed 4,000, excuse me, 4,000 people with a couple loads of fish. I mean, a couple of him, I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You, you take a couple fish, he feed, he feed 4,000 people. That's where it come from? That's where y'all got that from? Stop that line. Y'all know y'all even get that stuff from nothing in the Bible. That stuff is passed down from y'all from these pagan religions. These people don't, you know what I'm saying? These people too simple to, now nah, I don't even want to put it on the people because it's not on the people. And people, not everybody born in the world is supposed to be expert researchers. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to go out and check behind everything a pastor tell you. That's crazy. It just is, that's just the world that we in now. These people are going to lie to us. That's why I tell these people, look, I put a number at the bottom, you call. Not because I'm telling you you can't trust me, because I want to set a standard. If you're going to go listen to somebody else, make sure they got a number for you to call too. Because I guarantee you these people are going to sit here and lie to you. They're going to deny all of them. I'm just gonna say I ain't met one to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. They out there. I'm not, I'm not saying they not out there. Right. I'm just saying I haven't met them. Right? I haven't ran into one. And a lot of brothers out there they're just trying to figure it out. It could be some stuff that we wrong about right this moment. Right? It could be some stuff that we wrong about. And if that be the case, it's just because the Most High God didn't reveal it to us. That could happen to a lot of stuff. We talk about a few of the brothers, like you know what I'm saying. Honestly, we gotta give these brothers a chance. It's like something frustrating, bro, because we look, we know it, right? But even Paul warned it. He said, "Knowledge puffeth up, puff puffeth up, right? Knowledge kind of puts you in a place like I'm better. You know what I'm saying? I know more, and this or another. We gotta protect ourselves against that, right. right? Because the Most High God lets you get something, and then you be like, oh, everybody else stupid. I can't believe you don't see it. It's so obvious. 
It wasn't so obvious for you the whole time either. That's why we got to teach with patience. Right? You go to it, you know what I'm saying? Well, listen, that's what it say. Okay, you don't agree. That's fine. I understand. Keep pushing. Right? I ain't about to kill a whole bunch of time. You know what I'm saying? I'll talk to you as long as it's profitable. As soon as that thing just become like a pride match. You know what I'm saying? We good. I'm good on the pride fight. I'm more UFC. You know what I'm talking about? I'm good on the pride fight. We got, we all right. You know what I'm saying? You keep, you keep going. All right, well, you know what I'm saying? Believe what you want to believe. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it pushing. Right? But that's what it looks like when we have patience with people. These people will come around the most high God say so, and if they don't, then they but going to hell. When we read last hour and our reading last night, did y'all sure care? I love that thing. They said, yeah, they said, y'all, yeah, yeah, the disciple came up to y'all sure and they said, Don't you know that the Pharisees are offended by the stuff that you just said? Y'all sure said, Are they offended? He's like, listen. Let the blind lead the blind. Because guess what's gonna happen to him? The leader's gonna go into a ditch. Is that what he said? No, he said both of their darn butts gonna go into a ditch. He said the leader and the people follow him. When when did you see Yahushua say it's not it's not their fault? It's the leader's fault. Let's let's push the leader into a ditch and let's try to save all the people that's following him. That wasn't his attitude. His attitude was like, oh well, I told you the truth. Now you follow who you want to follow after that. What I'm going to sit here and stress myself out about people that's going that way. The story, the parable about the prodigal son. When the son left, you remember he, he left and he started eating out of what? Who remember what he started eating out of? Like a pig something? He started eating out of a pig's trough. Yeah. He left his rich daddy to go go out into these streets, right? And he started eating out of a pig's trough. Did Pops try to chase him down? Just find me in that parable where you saw Pop just with a flashlight looking for him. Where's my son? Where's my son? You won't find it. Guess what? Guess when Pop's come back into the picture? When the son was on his way back home. Then Pop saw him and they say he is a far way off and Pop started running after him. When he saw that he was coming back, now you got my attention. That's the ones that we pay attention to. That's the ones that we put our energy to. That's the ones that we run after. The ones that's already coming to the Most High God. Right? Help them out. All these people that are going other ways and rejecting and don't want to listen. and not They just not there yet. It could be that those same people will eventually be there. We pray to God for it. But let's not sit here and kill our, whole, kill our day trying to convince the people that ain't going to be convinced. It's a ton of people out here that's waiting to be convinced. It's a ton of people out here that's actually looking for God. Right? Let's, do, let's work on them. Even if we can't find them right now, let's let's work on ourselves to prepare when we do find them. Let's not kill no time. When I'm gonna kill time with people that I don't wanna I'm tired, I'm done with that. I did that. You know what I'm saying? I did that a while. You know what I'm saying? Like, we good on that. That ain't happening no more. But I'm killing time. How many people? As much argue, you know we used to argue on some Facebook. We used to get out there on Facebook. Let me tell you, these boys couldn't mess with us. On some darn Facebook? These boys wouldn't mess. We didn't get out there, we'd light their butt up. We didn't have to speak a darn word. We had back them into a country just post scripture. That's what we all, the whole time, that's what we did. We just post scripture. We didn't say a darn word. They say something, we just hit them with a butt. Boom, what about that verse? Oh, okay, boom, what about that verse? Oh, yeah, you must miss this. Didn't have to say a word to them. And you know what we did that? Just because you know what? They're going to come back and they'll be like, no, nah, that's your word. You back them into a corner, you hit them with all the Bible, and they start, they start looking at, oh, so you trying to say, I ain't trying to say nothing. I just gave you the word. Okay, but I'm saying, are you saying, no, I ain't saying nothing, I just gave you the word. Because now you can't say nothing. Now you just got to be like, you know what, either the word true, or I'm just not rocking with you. Right? Out of all that stuff that we did, how many people uh, start coming to Bible study and stay? How many people can we look back, all them people that we had arguments with, how many people can we look back and be like, okay, now they on the righteous path? The people that did start coming to Bible study, did, was it a result of those arguments? No. They ain't have to argue with me, man. When was the last time I, anybody in this room, who we argue with, other than our wife? <laughs> 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 right? You look at it, that they don't, the people over the years that's come to Bible study, some stayed, some left, 
Anytime they came, I can't think of one that came based off of like this is an argument. The, the ones that came based off an argument came here, argued, and left and never came back. <laughs> am I lying? So what am I killing time for? The book don't tell me to do it that way. When I tried it that way, it don't look like it gave me some cracking results that I broke the code. You know what? Let me just go with what the book say. Let the blind lead the blind. Guess what? Both of y'all butts be in that darn ditch when it's all over. Where we at? Mm, no, I got there. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Judges. Uh, yeah, we talking about the E5, right? What is it? Judges chapter 7, verse what? Uh, 20, or is it 8? 8, 8 verse 27. This is 8, verse 27. Right? So remember, they asked, they said, will you rule over us, Gideon? What was Gideon's other name? Jerubel. Right? So his other name was Jerubel. They called him Jerubel because, because he tore down the altar, his, his pop's altar. All the people wanted to get him. Right? And pop's was like, no, 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 no. Why would y'all make an argument for Baal? Right? If Baal got a problem with this, let Baal talk to him. So they start mocking him. It's like, okay, we're going to call him Jerubel now. Right? Baal is basically what his name is. You know what I'm saying? They start calling him after the God. Because basically they're saying, you know, they kind of mocking him. But the name stuck. Right? So you're going to see in the next chapter they start calling him that. Right? But they wanted Gideon or Jerubel. They wanted him and his sons to rule over them. Right? That's what the people of Israel wanted. Gideon said no, but make this ephod. So watch what happened after this ephod was made. And Gideon made an ephod thereof and put it in the city, even mm -hmm. in Ophrah. Mm -hmm. And all Israel went there a whoring after it, which, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more. So Gideon, the same Gideon that was like, I'm not going to rule over y'all. Who going to rule over him? Who did Gideon say was going to rule over him? The Lord. He said, the most high God going to rule over you. This same Gideon, do you think he made this ephod to become a snare to the people? You think that was his intention? Like, yeah, let me put together this ephod so everybody can start worshiping. No. Good intentions. I just wanted to put together an ephod, a little symbol, you know what I'm saying? I know that y'all want me to rule over you. This is a caveat. You know what I'm saying? I can't rule over you, but here, y'all can have this. Right? Just, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of glory to my name. Nothing, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to do nothing evil. But what happened? Evil came from it. That's why I appreciate Danielle. You got these socks. Don't let nobody talk you, talk you out of throwing them socks in the trash. It's a small thing to these people. That E5 was a small thing. Later on, what does it do? It becomes a snare to our people. It's a lot of small things that we look at that become very big. I mean, what's wrong with Christmas? We just, I mean, we just celebrate. Okay, let me tell y'all my story with Christmas. I almost lost my whole faith over Christmas. Not almost, I did. Yes, you can say it worked out to be a good thing, right? Right, but I don't know. I love all. I watched this, this uh, documentary called The Zeitgeist Theory. That thing lit my butt up. Beginning of that thing, I was trying to listen. They told me that thing was about the the money system. You know what I'm saying? Like how how, how money works in the U.S. and all that stuff and how everything is based off of cr uh, uh, credit and all that good stuff. So I'm thinking like, okay, look, I want to understand the, the, the United States money system. They, before they get into that, they spend like the first 30 minutes of that documentary lighting Christians' butts up. <laughs> the Bible says that, that December 25th is, the, is, the, uh, is the, the Christ's birthday. Well, December 25th is also the birthday of this ancient God and this ancient God. And this is also a day of worship for this ancient God. How where they get it from? These came thousands of years before Christianity and all that stuff. So you, they start laying out all this, all these, a lot of it is fact too. And I'm looking at it like, so up, like, goodness gracious. How am I supposed to believe in this now? The Bible is clearly lying. So I split off. It wasn't until a little bit later I looked into it and read it because I had to actually read the Bible. Right? When I actually read the Bible, you know what? I ain't read December 25th, not one time in this book. I ain't even seen the word December. Yeah. Or Christmas. Where did they get that from? You're going to see that name, man. I never seen, nobody told Y'all wish you a happy birthday, ever. 
I mean, the day of his birth, they came and gave him gifts. That's a fact. That's where it stopped. They didn't tell us what month. They didn't tell us, you know what I'm saying? They didn't tell us anything. So, <coughs> oh, the Bible wasn't wrong with that one. That was just Christian tradition. Yeah. You know, y'all, she had a problem with the Pharisees. He said, why do you nullify the commandments of God by your traditions? And that's what we was doing. We were nullifying the word of God by tradition because we made traditions and counted them as if they was in the book. So when these people shoot that stuff down, we look at all oh, the book shot down automatically. Yeah. That's why I think. So it, it looked innocent. I mean, I'm just hanging out with family. I don't even care about the tree. You know what I'm saying? Thing, and it, all this stuff just ended. I mean, just get, get, really is about family. That's what it's really about. Okay. All right? Meanwhile, you're teaching your kids lies. I mean, when they grow up, you taught them about God, you taught them about the tooth fairy, and you taught them about Santa Claus, right? So when they grow up and they see Santa Claus, he sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake, he knows when you've been good or bad, so be good for goodness sake. And then they tell you, oh God, he's omnipresent. He knows everything in your heart. Okay. So they get old enough to Google, and they Google Santa Claus. Oh, he's fake. Okay, Tooth Fairy. Oh, it's fake. But you telling me God real. Same person that told me Santa Claus and Tooth Tooth Fairy real is also telling me God real. I can't see none of them. And when I Google them, there's people that tell me all of them is fake. We confirmed and you admitted two of these is fake. When you gonna admit the third? I mean, because at first you told me that it's real, so eventually you must gonna be admit to me that God fake too. Oh, okay. Okay. It seems small. Seems real small until your kid grow older and uh, he figure out he ain't no idiot. Yeah, that's what you mean. That's what you did. Like you know, you grow up in a household where everybody's doing it, and it's like, oh, it's just for the kids. But then you get older and you start reading stuff, and you're like, wait. Man. I never seen this in no book somewhere. And I start asking, okay, why are we celebrating this? What is this? I'm like, well, it really ain't. This. And like, okay, then what's the point of we celebrating this? So then it causes this. Yeah. Because now you'd be like, because now I'm, I'd be like, I just don't celebrate this stuff. No. You gotta buy me nothing. And everybody thinks I'm pregnant, like I'm wrong or something. I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with me out there. And they tell you it don't mean nothing. No. They're like, man, these days don't mean ain't even that big a deal. Yeah. Watch when you stop doing how much it means to them. Oh, man. We had many of fights. Me and my wife, we had many a darn fights over these people holidays. That thing crazy me. We sit here fighting over these people holidays. I used to tell her, I'd be like, when was the last time you think your family fought over, over Passover? When was the last time you think they sitting there just arguing with each other, talking about, you know what, should we or should we not go join Philip and Tasha on, on Passover? I was like, man, they don't care nothing about our stuff. They care about their stuff. It's a big deal for them. Yeah. This stuff is important to them. Much they say it ain't, you know, just about family. No, we can have family anytime. We get together every Passover, every Purim. You know what I'm saying? Every in We get together. I don't see nobody around. Some of our family have come along, right? But we look at it, we look at We got to shoot that he lost. Some of this stuff just don't make sense. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I got to be the one to tell you. Just don't make sense, right? So... Some innocent stuff can end up being very detrimental to not just one person, but many people. Yeah, right? And we see that with Gideon. Alright? Keep going. Watch this. And Jerubel, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in his own house. Mm -hmm. And Gideon had three score and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives. Alright? He had a whole bunch of wives and had three score? Seventy sons. Three score and ten. Oh, three score and ten. That's seventy darn sons. Let me tell you, the man was getting it in. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Listen, 70 son? I pray to God after one. You know what I'm talking about? After one, I was looking like, yeah, that got that. You know what I'm talking about? 70, bro? All right, for sure. And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son whose name he called Abimelech. Mmm. Abimelech. Let's hear about him. 
And Gideon the son of Joash died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulcher of Joash's father in Ophrah of the Abizarites. So remember, they asked for Gideon to rule over them, right? Jerubbabel. What's his name? Jerubbabel. Jer Jerubbabel, right? They asked for him to rule over them. He said, no, God will rule over you. Remember? They said, Gideon and your son should rule over us. Gideon said, no, God will rule over you. Now Gideon's dead. That leaves his sons. Let's go to chapter 9, verse 1. And Abimelech, the son of Jerubbaal, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it's better for you, either that all the sons of Jerubbaal, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you. Right? Or that so he's saying, over you. should all of Gideon's sons rule over you? Right? See, Israel wanted his sons to rule over him. Gideon died. He was the one that was like, no. His sons ain't about that same, you know what I'm saying? His sons like, you know, whatever, clever. Right? So now, one of the sons went to the, the family of his mom. Right? Because remember, he got his dad's side, and he got his mom's side. So he went to his mom's side, mom's side of the family, and he was like, I mean, let me just pose a question to y'all. Do it make sense for all of us to rule over you? Like, all 70 of us to rule over you? Or would you prefer just one person rule over you? Watch what he say. He's a slick. Abimelech, he's a slick man. Watch what he say now. And his mother and brother and spake of him in the ears of all of the men of Shechem, all these words. And their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, he is our brother. He said, he is our brother, right? He's, I mean, he's of our blood. Guess what? Since Abimelech had all them wives, he had... Uh, Jerubel. Uh, I'm sorry. Since, uh, since uh, Gideon had all them wives, he had sons by different women who had different families. So now Abimelech just happens to be of the family of his family, his mom's family. So he's looking like in Shechem. in Shechem, right? So he's like, he's looking like, well, you look at my 60 other brothers, 60 something other brothers, right? They ain't your kin. They not related to y'all at all. I mean, I'm related to them because I share their dad, but y'all ain't related to them at all. Now, if you're going to have Gideon's sons rule over you at the very least, why not just choose one that's actually related to you? So they, they kind of toss that thing around a little bit. They're like, well, I mean, he is our brother, right? He is our people. You know what I'm saying? That thing kind of makes sense. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're going to look at. We ain't going to get into it today, but that's what we're going to look at. We're going to see how this man, you know what I'm saying, how he, he kind of tried to steal a whole authority from, from all of his brothers and, and uh, consolidate it into one. You know what I'm saying? But as you see, so far, if we look through Judges, you notice that people in their mind are doing the right thing, right? People are judges. They have these experiences with God. They start taking over stuff. It look right, but it doesn't have that lasting effect because none of them actually attained to righteousness. None of them learned the book. None of them went back and asked God, what do you want me to do about my life? You know what I'm saying? All of it is just a simple purpose of you rising up, knocking off these people, and then that was it for them. Right? They didn't go back and try to clean up their life. They didn't try to turn from sin. They didn't try to find out what righteousness is. None of that. And that's the problem. Those are the times that we're in now. People don't try to find out what righteousness is. They get a vision. They get something from God. They get a feeling. They get a little tinkle in their spine. They speak a little tongue. They get all these different things, and they feel like it's an experience from God. But they never stop and say, you know what? What is required of me? So then you have these cycles that just keep coming, keep coming keep coming because nobody's breaking the cycle because yeah. nobody is turning to righteousness right so that's what we want to learn from judges that's kind of the theme that you'll see throughout judges right you're gonna see it with abimelech you already seen it with gideon you saw it with Eha. you saw it all these people that we read about before all right and it only gets worse and worse as time goes all right any questions all right let's pray out